Iron Gwazi is the record-breaking hybrid roller coaster at Busch Gardens, Tampa. Rocky Mountain Construction transformed the former Gwazi wooden roller coaster into North America's tallest and steepest hybrid coaster. While the ride may have been delayed several times, the wait was well worth it. Iron Gwazi immediately takes the title as Florida's best roller coaster and one of the best creations from RMC. Find out why in this review. The story begins way back in 1999 with Gwazi. Wanting to differentiate itself from steel coasters being built in Orlando, Busch Gardens instead opened a dueling wooden roller coaster for that season. Built by Great Coasters International, this attraction received praise in its early years, but became rough over the next decade. Busch Gardens tried retracting the coaster and replacing the original PTC trains with Millennium Flyers around 2010, but these measures were just band-aids. I never rode the original Gwazi, but I heard it rode like Hershey's Wildcat in its final years. Gwazi was not long for this world, and the coaster was closed permanently early in 2015. But Gwazi continued to have a presence in the park. Its twisted wooden structure sat idle for years, looming over the midway named after it. Around the same time Busch Gardens tried to fix Gwazi the first time, a new manufacturer burst on the coaster scene. Rocky Mountain Construction revolutionized the industry with their iBox steel track and their ability to renovate old wooden roller coasters into smooth, intense, and enjoyable hybrid coasters. As chains like Six Flags and Cedar Fair RMC'd a handful of their coasters, enthusiasts dreamed what RMC could do with Gwazi. Late in 2018, Busch Gardens held a press conference to announce their new for 2019 roller coaster in Tigris and off-the-shelf premier ride Skyrocket 2. But as the park said, it was a hybrid announcement. After stating Gwazi had a rocky history, the park said something new would be placed on the ride site for the 2020 season. With all signs pointing to an RMC refresh of Gwazi, enthusiasts expected a dueling experience similar to Twisted Colossus. But what we got was much different. We would receive just a single track that stood over twice as tall as the original Gwazi. Iron Gwazi is easily the hybrid conversion with the least resemblance to his original form. On March 2019, Busch Gardens Tampa officially announced that they would be building the tallest hybrid coaster in North America. Iron Gwazi would stand just a smidge shorter than Energylandia's Zadra at 206 feet or 63 meters tall, but it would claim the record as the world's fastest hybrid coaster with a top speed of 76 miles per hour or 122 kilometers per hour and it would also be the world's steepest hybrid coaster with a beyond vertical 91 degree first drop. Anticipation mounted for the newest RMC hybrid, especially as it began testing. The ride was marching towards a March 2020 opening date, but we all know something else that happened that month, the COVID-19 pandemic. This halted testing on Iron Gwazi and it shut the park down for nearly three months. Unlike some chains like Cedar Fair that still chose to open their new rides anyway in 2020, SeaWorld decided to postpone all of the chain's attractions until 2021, or at least that was their original plan. Iron Gwazi had a new expected opening date at this point of spring 2021, but SeaWorld quietly changed the opening dates for all their new attractions from spring 2021 to anticipated 2021. That verbiage was not a good sign, and SeaWorld ultimately postponed all their new rides yet again until 2022 presumably to maximize their return on investment on their newest attractions. While this was a bummer as a consumer, especially for people who bought 2020 or 2021 season passes primarily for these new attractions, all sins have seemingly been forgiven ever since Iron Gwazi opened. Well previewed, Iron Gwazi has been open to annual pass holders for the past few weeks. The ride officially opens for everyone on March 11th. Until then, it's hard to get a grasp how long this line may be once it opens. But I suspect it may draw crowds similar to Cheetah Hunt, i.e. 60 to 90 minute waits most days. And this is for a few reasons. One, Iron Gwazi has a similarly prominent location towards the front of the park. It's one of the first rides you encounter at Busch Gardens, and this ride dominates the park's skyline. Two, Iron Gwazi has an equally low height restriction of just 48 inches. Most of the park's other major roller coasters have 54-inch height requirements. 3. Iron Gwazi may have a comparable capacity. Cheetah Hunt with both stations and all trains in use definitely has a higher capacity, but this hasn't happened on my past few visits to Busch Gardens Tampa. 4. You could argue both these rides are the two most popular in the park. 
Like most of SeaWorld's new attractions, Iron Gwazi will not be offered in most quick queues. You can only get as a pricey one-time option on the highest level quick queue, so most people will be waiting in that standby line initially. Iron Gwazi's queue line starts with some switchbacks below the station, then you have this rounded ramp up to the station, followed by another series of switchbacks. Sands quick queue, the wait takes approximately 30 minutes if all those station switchbacks are full. Now let's talk about Gwazi's theme. The original Gwazi was themed to a mythical beast with the heads of both a lion and a tiger. So people were confused when the new Gwazi was themed to crocodiles. So I don't really know what Gwazi means, but it is fun to say. I think this is a word the park came up with. This station has a jungle vibe to it, and the crocodile themed lead car looks incredible. It's one of the best lead cars on any attraction. Then the wait offers some fun views of the pre-lift, and you also have a series of informational signs on alligators and crocodiles. And most importantly, you have the music. Iron Gwazi has an epic soundtrack with jungle beats. It's pretty easy to hear while the trains are loading, but it is tricky to hear the dispatch sound over the ride itself. The rest of Iron Gwazi is unthemed, which is understandable given the ride's intensity and speed, but the ride doesn't need that theming. Iron Gwazi's ride experience stands on its own, and the ride looks super imposing with its hulking structure, and that vibrant purple track really pops. When you reach the end of the queue line, there is a grouper, but you're able to request any row you'd like. The front and back rows have an extended queue line that can sometimes take an extra 10 to 15 minutes, but I preferred Iron Gwazi in the back car. I found the very back and second to back equally amazing, so I typically rode Iron Gwazi in the latter because it saves some time. The restraints are similar to other RMCs. You have a seatbelt with a lap bar and shin guards. I've never found these restraints uncomfortable. They don't inhibit my ability to experience the ride's airtime, nor have they caused pain. However, I know taller riders have had issues with the shin guards on other RMCs. Others have also found the lap bar uncomfortable during rapid fire series of airtime hills. I'll talk about this later, but I don't think this part is much of an issue with Gwazi. Now if you're a larger guest, Iron Gwazi may be tricky. It's probably the least accommodating roller coaster in all of Florida. RMCs are not the most accommodating rides to begin with, and this one may be a little trickier to fit on based on some stories I've heard. The one thing I know is that the test seat is harder to fit in than the vehicle itself. So if you're on the edge, it may be worth just trying the train. Once dispatched, you slowly roll out of the station. RMC has developed a pension for crazy pre-lifts, but Iron Gwazi's isn't too crazy. It does have a little trick though. You just have this abrupt dip down and to the left. It doesn't do too much up front, but it does jerk you forwards in the back. I personally wasn't a fan of this element, and I found it a little uncomfortable, but that's the only negative I have to say about Iron Gwazi's ride experience. You then ascend the towering lift hill, getting awesome views of both the park and Tampa Bay. At the top, the lift slows down similar to what Iron Rattler used to do. This causes the front to lean over the edge similar to a dive coaster. Now I was skeptical if the extra 1 degree would make much of a difference in the first drop, but I actually think it did. Iron Gwazi's first drop has more power to it than similarly sized hybrid drops like Steel Vengeance or Zadra. In the back, you get several seconds of very strong and sustained ejector airtime. I know there were a few moments later in the ride that others preferred, but this drop was my favorite element on Gwazi. It's the best drop in Florida without a doubt. And the drop is pretty good up front too, as it gives floater airtime up there. This was more than I got in other hyper hybrids, which is why I think that extra 1 degree may help. The pullout is pretty exciting on this coaster as well. First, you have some scary head choppers with steel beams, and these will not be the last head choppers on the ride either. Second is very forceful. I grayed out on all my rides from the positive G's, and I know plenty of other coaster enthusiasts who did the same. And there are plenty more positive G's to follow as well. The second element is this massive outer bank turn, but this one rides differently than the one on Steel Vengeance. The flip outwards doesn't occur until you're near the apex of the element, the initial moment launching you out of your seat is much more abrupt. I'd describe it as having the violent burst of airtime at the start like the outward bank on Wicked Cyclone, but you remain out of your seat at that point like the one on Steel Vengeance. I found the ejector airtime a little more sustained in the back, and that descent is pretty darn wild between how it sharply yanks you downwards and also banks sideways, 
so you get some good laterals with all that airtime. The second pullout is nearly as intense as the first, and I would start to see some gray here. And then you also have a few more head choppers. Iron Gwazi then curls upwards, maintaining the positive G's for a bit. And then you reach the rise most anticipated element, the death roll. Named after a predatorial move by a crocodile, this is essentially one of RMC's barrel roll drops, except you enter this element with a full head of speed, so it rides far differently. You get the same head choppers as the prior ones, but instead of being gracefully levitated out of your seat, you basically get sustained flejector to ejector airtime, and the violence of the twist results in crazy lateral simultaneously. I saw some early reviews stating the death roll wasn't quite as good as they anticipated, but it was everything I could have dreamed of. It is easily one of the best inversions on the planet, and it may even be better than Velocicoaster's famed Mosasaurus roll. The death roll reminded me of the intensity of a barrel roll on one of those Gerslauer sky rollers, while also getting strong sustained airtime. The next element is considered an inversion by the park, and that may be debatable as it's somewhere in between an overbank and a cutback. But whatever it is, the train flies through this element. It's quite snappy, and it also gives some laterals. And if you're in the back, you'll also get a faint pop of airtime on the descent. It's probably the weakest airtime moment on the ride, but Iron Gwazi follows up with one of its strongest. You then careen over the reverse wave turn over the station. This element delivers sustained, sideways ejector airtime. The element's power reminded me of the wave turn Twisted Cyclone, but it's more sustained in Iron Gwazi, and you also have a whole lot more speed through it. Making the moment even wilder is the surprise head chop with the lift hill. You cannot see it coming and it'll make most people flinch. Everything up to this point is what I consider to be Iron Gwazi's first half, and it may have the best first half of any RMC. Then the second half grew in me with each ride. After that reverse wave turn, you shoot into a turnaround comprised of half a camelback, a wave turn, and a zero G stall. The half camelback gives a good ejector pop for all. The subsequent wave turn is one of the elements that most benefits from Iron Gwazi warming up. In general, I thought this ride ran like a bat out of hell. But this element went from okay floater early in the day to a legit pop of ejector when warmed up. The zero G stall may not be one of RMC's best, but it's still a really nice inversion. You don't come out of your seat like the other ones, but you do feel weightless. And then you have some great head choppers and an abrupt burst of laterals coming out of the element. Iron Gwazi then shoots into yet another turnaround. Everyone gets popped out of their seat. The front always gets ejector airtime here. While the back doesn't quite get ejector until the ride is fully warmed up, but even early in the day you'll still get floater back there. You then cruise over an Asian camelback. Named after the camel, you have two humps high above the ground. You get two rapid fire pops of ejector airtime in most seats, but those in the back get sustained ejector airtime on the second hump because it has a sizable drop on the other side. You then zoom around a surprisingly forceful bank turn and fly over the ride's final drop. Those up front get a good pop of ejector airtime, but those in the back get a very powerful burst of ejector airtime. It is one heck of a way to end Iron Gwazi. You then rapidly twist into the brake run, getting a lateral snap along the way, and then you're flung forwards from the sudden deceleration. Some RMCs are criticized for limping to the brake run, but Iron Gwazi hits those brakes with a full head of steam, similar to what Lightning Rod does. Now there were two concerns I had for Iron Gwazi relative to the other elite RMCs. First, length. Iron Gwazi is 4,075 feet, or 1,242 meters of track, and that's a decent length. But with all that height and speed, there were some concerns it would feel short. But the ride experience has a satisfying length to it. Two, would all those overbanks and turnarounds offer airtime? Iron Gwazi eliminated those concerns after my first ride without fail. Iron Gwazi's pacing is phenomenal. Few RMCs hold its speed like this one. Iron Gwazi reminded me again of Lightning Rod or Zadra with how it hurtled through the layout. There's no mid-course brakes, it's just one element after another, and most of those elements were exceptional. Plus, you have more positive Gs than usual peppered throughout the layout. I highlighted those first two pullouts, but there are a few other turns on the ride with positive Gs as well. RMCs are usually pretty free of these forces, so it was a nice change. 
One other thing that was different is this ride didn't have the rapid fire series of bunny hills at the end of the ride like the other RMCs. Iron Guazu is more about quality than quantity. And then like the other RMC hybrids, Iron Guazi is super smooth despite all those aggressive maneuvers. So what would I rate Iron Guazi? I would give the newest hybrid coaster a perfect 10 out of 10. Iron Guazi is incredible. Between the powerful airtime, memorable inversions, and blistering speed, this coaster does everything I could have wanted. Just to put in perspective how great this ride is, I recently spent two days at Busch Gardens Tampa, and in one of those days, I only rode Iron Guazi. This is easily the park's best attraction now, and it was a ride the park sorely needed. Busch Gardens Tampa always had a strong coaster lineup, but was missing an elite airtime machine, and Iron Guazi most certainly fulfills that niche. And it goes even further. This is the best coaster in Florida in my opinion, dethroning Velocicoaster. I rode both rides within 24 hours of each other, and it was no contest which one I preferred. The most interesting debate is how Iron Guazi compares to other RMCs. It can't beat Lightning Rod for me, and the only RMC I may prefer is Steel Vengeance. What Iron Guazi does may be better than Steel Vengeance, it just doesn't have the same length. But still, that easily makes Iron Guazi a top 5 coaster for me, which beat my already high expectations. There were already a ton of great reasons for a theme park enthusiast to visit Florida or Busch Gardens Tampa, and this just adds another reason to the list. So those are my thoughts on Iron Guazi, the new for 2020, the new for 2021, the new for 2022, Hyper Hybrid Roller Coaster at Busch Gardens, Tampa. What are your thoughts on Iron Guazi? Have you ridden it? I'd love to hear your thoughts on this ride down in the comments, and let me know how you think it compares to other RMCs. If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you considered subscribing because there'll be a lot more roller coaster amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.